In today's video, we're going to be looking at how we can localize a physical environment with augmented reality and the Immersal SDK. We'll go over creating a project to display localized AR overlays for XR hardware found here in my office. Also, each AR overlay area will be toggled by tapping on each real world object. And we're also going to be adding a localized virtual button to play a video right above my desk. So I wanna show you how that works. So let's go ahead and jump into my computer and I start working on it. I'm using 2022.3 LTS. So in my case, 21.f1. So make sure that you use the latest LTS is recommended by Immersal. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and name this project. It's gonna be Unity Immersal Demos. And then the location and also the organization is going to be Dilmer in my case. And then you can just go ahead and uncheck the analytics. And then we can just click on create project. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna be installing the package for Immersal and also importing the samples. I show you how to do that on the previous video, so just make sure that you watch that. Okay, so once you get everything set up, you're gonna get these samples folder in here, which I recommend going through it because they provide a bunch of different prefabs, utilities, which we're going to be using some of them today. Also make sure that you go into scenes and look at some of these examples, including the simple sample, which includes the Immersal SDK and some of the different prefabs that we're going to be using in this video. You can also click on import TMP essentials, which is going to be used throughout this video. The next thing to keep in mind though, is if you're using the free license, it's going to be required that you include the Immersal logo. So just make sure that you go into the Immersal logos folder and add it to your application. Then we're gonna be scanning my area in a lot of detail. I wanna make sure that I get as many points and I'm going to be capturing images in here. There's going to be about 380 images that we're going to be capturing. We're also going to be needing to upload the map so that the backend for Immersal can process it. You can also look at the point cloud that got generated and then also we can test that localization is working correctly in augmented reality. We can just go ahead and remove them in camera here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and right click in here and then go into XR. So if you go into that, this is using AR Foundation behind the scenes. It's one of the dependencies for their SDK. So you're gonna see some of these components that might be familiar to you. Just go into XR Origin and then Mobile AR and it's gonna create this XR Origin component which we're gonna need, which contains the main camera and it has the main camera tag as, you know, accordingly. And then everything in here is already set up for us. There's gonna be one more thing that we need to do, but before we do something else in there, right click in here, and then we're also gonna need another component which is gonna basically handle the AR session within Unity. So we can just go ahead and do that. So the AR session is so that we can use augmented reality in you know either AR kit or AR core. So that's going to be require and then we're also going to be adding a canvas which we're going to use for some debugging information so go into ui and then we can add a canvas here and then you can go here and then change this to be a scale with a screen size the resolution here is going to be 1080 by 1920 let's make sure that you set that up and then we're also going to go into our event system. Just make sure that we fix this input system, UI input module. You know, if you need to interact with UI. The first one that we're going to be adding though, it's going to be the Immersal SDK. And it's gonna be the core component that is going to allow us to basically localize in augmented reality. It's gonna handle all the complexities for us. So if you expand it, I'll show you this briefly on the previous video but it has this immersal session, it has AR Foundation support. So the ones that we're gonna be using in this video quite a bit are going to be, basically it's going to be this localizer and we're gonna be binding into some of these events. So there is an event here where the localization happens the first time, which is pretty helpful to get things set up. You might want to, you know, disable point clouds initially, which is, you know, which is what I normally do or the content that you want to display. Maybe you don't want to show that until we get the everything localized. So this is gonna be an action that you can buy into. Or you can do things as we get new successful localizations, which we're also going to be using. So just know that that's going to be used quite a bit. There's also a scene updater and a tracking analyzer. I used this one on the previous video. I actually overwrote it. But in this case, we're just gonna be using the 
localizer quite a bit. As far as the UI, we're going to be using, if you go here under utilities, there's gonna be a lot of different things in here that you can use. For this video, we're going to be using the pose indicator, and it's gonna be this really cool indicator that is gonna tell us whether the pose is weak. And you can see here, if we don't have any pose, basically if there's no localization happening and the pose is not getting captured yet, it's going to display this as it is. Otherwise, it's gonna to change to yellow or it's gonna to change to, if we have a good pose, then we can see that in blue. And then if it's an excellent pose, we're gonna see that in green. And there's gonna be different sprites available for those. You can see those in here. We can make that a little bit bigger so you guys can see it. So that's gonna change automatically. We don't need to, you know, we don't need to implement anything like that. I just like saving time. So this is going to be saving us a lot of time. So let's go back into utilities and then we're gonna go ahead and drag and drop that pose indicator. The one that we need is going to be the localization status text and it's using text mesh pro so just make sure that you import the tmp essentials that way we can render the text and then i can just drag and drop that into my canvas in here i'm going to create a couple of different objects that we're going to use to basically place those maps so i'm going to call this one is going to be my ar space and then just make sure that everything is at zero, 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 so we don't have any crazy positioning on the map. And then I'm also going to be creating another one, so just right click on AR space, and then it's gonna be a child. And this one is going to be holding all of our maps, so I'm just gonna say AR map, and then just make sure that everything is at zero, zero as well. On the AR space, I'm just gonna basically add a component, it's gonna be AR space, and then I'm also going to be adding an AR map. So just go ahead and search for that here. And then it's gonna tell you here that the map has not been configured just yet. Well, we'll configure it in just a minute. So just make sure that you go to developers.immersal.com and you're gonna be able to get to this once you create an account and you can create a free account and start experimenting. There's also some documentation and also the beta version that I have can be, basically you can get it through here. It's gonna have an ID, so I'm gonna copy that to my clipboard because I'm gonna need it in Unity. But this is gonna be basically my office, right? So if I click on view the map, you're gonna see this whole map of the office and then it's gonna show the point cloud with white colors. So what I like to do though is I like the green, I don't know, I just got used to the green color that they have with the point clouds in the Immersal SDK. So I'm gonna make the point clouds a little bit smaller. This is gonna be the devices that I have right here, basically on my right hand side. And then I also have a computer in here. So I'm gonna go into open settings and then I'm gonna go ahead and just put this panel right here. Dilmer at learnxr.io and then the password is gonna be the password that I used to create this account. And then once you're good to go, just click on login. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that in here. And there's gonna be multiple options in here. If you had a map file, you can associate it in here. What I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna create a new empty object and any content that you need for your experience is gonna be living under the AR space. So this one is going to be AR content. Now let's go ahead and look at how we can change how the localization works. Cause currently it's trying to localize multiple times and it's just going to keep going and going. And the reason why I don't wanna do it that way is because if we have content that keeps localizing, we might get the content moving around depending on how good the localization is. So I want to stop localizing as soon as we find an area that it's localized. And then if you want to localize it again, we can use a button. I also want to add an option to basically disable visibility of the visualization. So we're gonna be adding those two different buttons. So the first one that I'm gonna do, is going to be for the localization. So let's go ahead and right click in here. We're gonna go under UI and then we can add a button, Text Mesh Pro. The next thing that I wanna do though is how do we control the state of immersive localization? So they have a really cool option in here. If I go under utilities, there is going to be, actually under scripts, there's going to be a localizer settings panel. So if I double click on it, basically it's going to be providing a pass. So if you want to pass 
the session of Immersal. We can do that if you want to resume or you can just create your own and basically access the singleton and then session to be able to do that. So for this video, we're going to be either stopping or resuming the localization. So just make sure that we do that by accessing the script. You can create your own, like I said, if you want to, but in my case, I think I'm just gonna add it to this component here. So we can just say settings, localizer settings panel. And now we're gonna be able to access that from some of the events on these buttons. So for this one though, we want to bind to the onclick event. So just go ahead and click on add. And then I'm gonna be associating Immersal SDK and then accessing the localizer settings panel. This one, what we wanna do is we want to resume the session. And that's because at that point, this localized button is going to be basically enabled and then we want to allow it to localize. As soon as we get a localization, then we're going to be disabling this button. So we're gonna resume in this case. And then I'm also going to be basically changing the interaction here because at this point, we don't really want to make it interactable. So I'm gonna go ahead and say button and then I'm also going to set these to interactable and it's going to be basically set to false because once we click it, I don't, or select it, I don't want people to be pressing and pressing multiple times. So we're just gonna go ahead and disable that as well in this case. And then the next thing that I need to do though is if we go into the Immersal SDK and then expand it, there's gonna be a couple of things in here that we need to buy into. So the first one that I want to do, this AR content by default is going to be disabled, right? We don't wanna show anything if we haven't really localized any, you know, any area. So what I'm gonna do is as soon as we get the first localization, we're gonna be enabling this. And then what we can do, we can just set it to be true in this case, because now we localize our space. So now we can display virtual objects. The other thing that I wanna do though, is as soon as we get the unsuccessful localizations sent to us, this is gonna be sending us new localizations. Now we can start changing the state, right? Like we got a, lo a successful localization. So I want to go ahead and pass the session because I don't want the system to keep localizing and localizing multiple times. So I'm gonna do very similar to what we did before. Immersal SDK. And then in this case, we're gonna change this to be pass. So let's go ahead and pass the localizer. And then I'm also going to change the interactable property of the button to be true because I want to allow people to press that button if they want to localize one more time. And then what I can do is we can go here into bool interactable and then basically allow it to be selected. That way we have the cycle of, okay, we're localizing, so we don't want to keep localizing once we have a localized area and then the option can be enabled and then they can press it again if they want to localize one more time. And this one is gonna be called Immersal Runtime Options and then just go ahead and click to create it. So back in Unity, we're gonna be adding a new button. So we're gonna go ahead and clone this one. That should be all that we need to do as far as like the UI. There's also a new layer that we're gonna need for the next part. So let's go ahead and add a new layer and this one's going to be AR UI. That's going to be for some ray casting that we're gonna need when we select the different objects in my physical environment. So as we select each augmented reality or virtual reality object, there's going to be a box collider in that area that we're going to be doing a ray cast. And then as we do a ray cast and we get a collision, we're gonna be displaying some of the specs for each one of the devices. We also need to make sure that this visualizers button is enabled. Otherwise we won't be able to tag all the visualizers. And then we also need to associate it with our new script. That way we can change the text. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and select the text from the visualizers button. Go ahead and drag them and drop them into Unity and I'll show you what's in each of them. And then we can go into prefabs and it's gonna be one of the areas in here. So we can probably just zero out everything so that we can have them close by. And then now this is where this comes in handy, right? We're gonna be dragging this into the inside the air content so that it's inside the air space. And then now is where I can start placing some of these. So 
So we have Apple Vision Pro here. We also have, in this case, the Magic Leap 2, Magic Leap 1, then Unreal, then we have the Tilt 5 here, the Oculus DK1 Developer Kit. It's also located in here. We have the video here with the video player, and then also the Vario. It's going to be located here on this other corner. So this is the thing, you have to, you know, try the localizer multiple times until you kind of get, you get a good feeling of how things are performing. So there's gonna be a lot of testing going back and forth. I think that it's okay. And then this one, we might just move it a tiny bit to the left. And then the actual video player here, we are going to be, it's gonna move forward. All right guys, so the last thing that I'm gonna do is we're gonna be creating a new content raycast basically to be able to toggle some of the mini UIs that we have on each one of these components and also to be able to play the video on this video player texture in here. So what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and go and do that in the XR origin. So I'm gonna go into scripts as well. And I believe I also have a script in here that I need to move. So I'm gonna move that into scripts so that everything is clean and nice. So what I'm gonna do here is let's go ahead and add a new script by right clicking on the scripts folder and then go into create and I'm gonna go ahead and do a C sharp script. This one I'm gonna call AR content raycast. We have a layers to include so that we can only include the AR underscore UI layers that we have on the AR areas. Also the on button activated, on button deactivated. These are so that we can play the video. I'm gonna be associating that through the inspector. We're also making sure that we do have a touch on the screen. And then when we start touching, we're gonna to be getting the ray from the camera. Then we're gonna be doing also a physics that ray cast. So just to make sure that we can actually collide with the collider that it is within the AR area or the AR button. Also get all the AR components. We also can check to make sure that if the UI and also the arrow is associated with that component, then we wanna make sure that we toggle those. And also I'm going to be doing the similar thing with the actual button press. I'm basically doing this so that we can also change the state of those buttons and also execute the action so that we can play and stop the videos. Also associate the on button activated and also the on button deactivated. We also need to make sure that this is disabled. And then lastly, if we go into the XR origin, make sure that we include the AR UI. And this is the fun part, guys, because we get to test the entire experience. You can see that the actual specs on each one of the devices is showing correctly. I can toggle through most of them. Also, we're showing point clouds in here because I wanted to show you that we have a successful localization as shown on the very top. Apple Vision Pro specs showing correctly. Also, the Magic Leap 2 and the Magic Leap 1. We can also see the video playing right above the desk and everything is positioned really, really well and I'm really happy with the results. I hope you enjoy watching this video and experimenting with the Immersal SDK. Also be sure to go to immersal.com to sign up for a free account and start using their localization tools. And also look at additional resources that I'm including below. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Thank you guys. Bye.